Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's not been that long actually since I did my previous video. So this video is hot on the footsteps of my previous video that was all to do with trying on different types of clothes. And so this one today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, hints and tips that I have used and I personally have found have helped me over the past seven or eight years when exploring the whole world of women's fashion and just trying to get my head around what looks good and what doesn't. So I thought in this video I would share that with you and I hope that it helps. Um, please don't forget to like and comment and subscribe also hit that notification button so that you know when I have uploaded a new video. First of all, I think it's really important that we try to have an understanding of the different type of body shapes out there and perhaps which one we fall into as um, male to female trans women. Like I said in my previous video, um, we have different proportions to that of a cisgendered woman, so sometimes getting off the coat hanger clothes online or going into a shop and trying them on could be quite difficult. So trying to think about body shapes and understanding which one perhaps that you are. Um, there are a couple of channels that I have subscribed to um, on YouTube, which I'm also going to put the links to below. One is to a lady called Justine Leconte. Uh, she's a French lady, she's a fashion designer, and she has some amazing advice on different ways to dress different body types. So whether you're an inverted triangle or a rectangle, for instance, what would look good on you. And I've taken quite a bit of advice from her. Um, I've also been on Pinterest and had a look on there. Um, and then there was another account as well um, by a lady called Ali Art. Um, she has a whole different take on body types and she uses a different sort of model at looking at body types too. She doesn't so much look at whether you're a, an hourglass or an apple or a pear, what she looks at is um, another train of thought where you could either be like a romantic body shape or a gamine or a, a, a natural body shape or a flamboyant natural body shape. There are lots of different variations. It's really interesting to watch. Um, and I found uh, some of her advice as well very useful. So, I mean, I don't know either of these ladies personally, but I'm gonna pop their links down below because I think they really help. Thinking about body types, I know that I am an inverted triangle, which means that I'm broader across the top and then I go narrow into the hips. I've got narrow hips and long legs. I'm tall, quite athletically built, uh, a trans woman, so that's kind of quite typical. I think also for other trans women, um, it's, it is unlikely that you're going to be an hourglass figure, but there could be um, ladies out there that are more of an apple shape. There could be ladies that are more of a rectangular shape. Quite a lot is going to be to do with uh, an inverted triangle. So ladies who've got broader shoulders, narrower hips. It's quite the norm for a lot of trans women. One of the key things we also have to look at when choosing clothes is to choose clothes that draw your attention away from parts of the body that you don't like necessarily or things that you don't want to highlight. So clothes that detract from your shoulders, perhaps clothes that draw the attention downwards. Those are the really two main key things that I have found has helped me understanding that your person's attention needs to be brought away from the top half a little bit more to what's going on around the middle and the bottom half because that way you look a little bit more in proportion you might even look like you've got a bit more of a shape it's all about creating a clever illusion and getting away with it although i've done um, these videos as a guide to help you um, this is by no means gospel it's all about you having your own individual style and finding the colors and shapes and items of clothes that you enjoy wearing things that give you confidence ultimately that is what works the best but some of these hints and tips thrown into the mix as well may probably help. So mostly it's about what you like, but also having a little help along the way just to make things 
you know, a little bit nicer. So I have created 10 tips for you, things that I use when I go shopping, when I browse online to help me purchase my clothes. And just through trial and error over, over the past seven or eight years of buying ladies clothes, unlike a lot of cisgendered women, we haven't grown up developing a style. Quite often we've just had to make it up as we go along and um, learn off our cisgendered, transgendered um, female friends. So these are 10 tips that I tend to use when I buy clothes. Number 10. I decided to start from the top and work down. So I'm starting with the head essentially. Number 10, um, I'm going to talk about hats. What kind of hats will suit us? That's a really difficult one to say whether or not a hat would suit a trans person or a cisgendered lady. I don't think you can really tell. Hats are incredibly personal. It's all to do with your face shape and your hair um, and the clothes you're wearing at the time, the type of time of year, the season that we're in. But personally, I find what's really flattering on women in general are nice wide brim hats in the summer. Obviously try and steer clear of things that, I don't know, look really masculine on you or are going to draw too much attention to the fact that maybe if you haven't got a lot of hair, it's gonna draw attention to that part. Things like that, really. Um, earrings, I'll talk a little bit about jewelry later, but um, earrings are another thing as well. Um, might draw attention to your face if you want to do that. And invest in really good quality makeup. I think I'm gonna do another whole kind of video on makeup tips another time. But what I will say today as we're talking about the face is um, invest in good quality makeup. I have found over the years that when I have bought a lot of kind of drugstore makeup, um, I tend to use a lot more and it doesn't last so long, whereas if I buy more luxury brand makeup, which is very expensive, it tends to last longer and it tends to wear better. Having said that, luxury brand makeup is very expensive, so I tend to only have a few items such as a good foundation, good mascara and concealer. I tend to spend quite a bit of money on those because I want those to last all day. Other things such as lipstick and blushes and bronzers. Um, I think I can get away with like, um, things from like Superdrug and Boots and stuff like that. Um, there's some good stuff out there. There is a company called Makeup Revolution. They have a really good, well-priced selection of makeup. I quite often find myself browsing in there. So it's a mixture of the two really, but take time to watch YouTube tutorials. And, and just learn. Um, eventually you do get the hang of it. Number nine, right, I can't talk about number nine today because I have got a round necked t-shirt on, but what I do tend to go for um, is a v-neck t-shirt. V-neck t-shirts are drawing the attention quite simply downwards. So they're drawing your attention away from the top half of your body from your shoulders they're bringing it down towards the middle so if you are looking at buying a jumper or a shirt uh, v-necks are really great other things as well if you're wearing button-up shirts undo a few buttons at the top open the neckline up a little bit to expose a bit more sort of skin here again drawing the attention down and creating kind of a downward flow to, from like your face through your top half. I find that that always works really well. Number eight, plain and simple tops. Want to try and steer clear from tops that have any sort of embellishment around the shoulder area, things that again, that are gonna just draw attention to the shoulders. Also tops, unlike the one I'm wearing again today, quickly realizing this was not the right top for this video, but um, that aren't too busy, that aren't too patterned, that aren't really bright in colour, that um, are going to make a real statement because that is like saying, hey, look at the top half of my body. Um, it can create too much of an imbalance between the top half and the bottom half in that the top half becomes pro more prominent. What you kind of really want to do is swap that around so it's the bottom half that becomes more prominent, less so the top. Number seven. If you want to wear stripes, try and get vertical stripes for the upper body. 
again, like with the v-neck, we're trying to draw the attention downwards. Vertical stripes can be quite slimming, whereas horizontal stripes on the top half are just making you even wider. So try to go for vertical stripes, particularly on the top half, and then perhaps save your horizontal stripes for around the bottom half, so in skirts and in trousers and things like that. That will kind of give you more of a proportion to the lower half as opposed to your top half and create a better balance between the top and the bottom. Number six. So for number six, I am gonna talk about dresses and skirts. Um, I've got quite a lot of wrap dresses or I've had quite a few different sort of wrap dresses over the years. And basically um, that means that the uh, detail in the dress, a lot of the detail is pulled round and goes to the hip and waist area. So again, less fussy up top, really basic short sleeves, or if they're long sleeves, just not fussy at all, but they, all of the detail in the dress, if you like, might be along the neckline, and then it's pulled down to um, sort of a knot type of feature that's around your waist or your hip. I find that they can look really, really great because again, it's making a fuss of your waist and hip area and less so of the upper body area, again, drawing your attention downwards. The other thing that I, I think works in dresses and tops to that matter is if they're long sleeve, is not having the embellishment here, but having, sometimes with a dress with sleeve embellishment is really nice because a lot of the time, our hands are by our sides, which means that embellishment is then down lower. Um, and I find, again, that draws attention to your lower half. So that can also work really well. Try and steer clear of dresses that are too tight on your bottom half. So things like pencil skirts and bodycon type dresses. I know they can look super sexy on the right women, but generally women with more of an hourglass figure or a pear shape type body shape tend to get away with those a lot more than somebody who's an inverted triangle, for instance. Um, it's just too figure hugging. Instead, when we look at the way a dress or a skirt flares out, goes out from the hip and waist area, choose bottom parts that are more less fitted but more flared, so like A-line type shapes, um, skirts that have got pleats to them, skirts that pro provide a lot of movement when you walk, um, and dresses as well that go in at the waist and then they flare out at the bottom. They don't have to be massive, but they can just be quite loose fitting on the bottom half. In my previous video, the red dress that I bought is an example of that. It ties up at the waist, creating the illusion of a smaller waist, yet the bottom half of it flares out and, and has a lot of movement in it. It's quite a dynamic dress when you're walking. It's very feminine and it can be extremely flattering for somebody who has um, more slimmer hips to their shoulder width. Number five, trousers and jeans. Um, I have always kind of worn jeans that were a little bit more loose fitting. So those are the kind of boyfriend type jeans, uh, boot cut jeans, also really flattering, giving you a bit of width in your legs. Um, those I would recommend over like skinny jeans. Skinny jeans are not gonna do you any favors whatsoever if you've got narrow hips. All it's gonna do is go, hey look, I've got narrow hips and I'm really emphasizing it. So try and find jeans that are a little bit more loose fitting. They can be a little slim fitting on the leg but then have that boot cut at the bottom. It's really flattering. If you've got long legs as well, if you are tall and have long legs, they look amazing. So boot cut jeans and trousers work really well. Um, another type of trouser that looks really nice is like these harem pants you can get particularly in the summer. They're quite loose fitting, they've got a drawstring at the top. I got a pair from Primark the other day on my previous video, you will see I already got a few pairs of them from a few years ago that I always wear in the summer. Loose fitting, light, drawstring in the middle. They do kind of gather up around the ankle but they're not tight fitting. So it's thinking about things that are going to be loose fitting, create a little bit of width to your bottom half. Number four. For number four I am going to talk about bags and that might seem like a bit of an odd thing to talk about when we're talking about clothes because 
quite often bags are just a really personal choice, aren't they? We either like one style and we don't like another. It's very individual to us. But believe it or not, there are some recommendations when it comes to bags, particularly if, again, you are trying to create a silhouette that doesn't focus on the top half of your body. Um, the first thing I will say that bags that have long straps are good for um, trans women because the bag itself will then fit around or hang around sort of your waist and hip area. Try and avoid bags that have a short-ish handle that you tuck under your armpit and sort of sits here, this sort of area. Because again, that's adding width to your top half. Have a longer bag, even if it's cross-body, if it's cross-body, a thin strap that goes across your body, and then the bag will rest around your sort of hip and bottom area. That can add width to your hips. The other thing as well, bags that sit in the crook of your arm, they're okay, I've got a couple of those. Nice big bags that sit in the crook of your arm, they look really, really nice. Try and avoid bags that are too teeny tiny small. Um, basically you can't get a lot in them, but also, um, I don't know, if you're quite a big build, a tiny bag isn't gonna do anything to spread your proportions out at all. Nice big bag, especially in the summer coming up, uh, big sort of wicker weave bags, things like that, they can look amazing. Number three. Number three, I'm gonna talk about jewelry. And again, like with bags, it's an accessory, so it's quite personal to you, very individual sort of choice and taste. But generally, I find that it's nice to wear jewellery. I find that it can create a focus to parts of the body that you want to try and highlight is bangles. Um, wearing bangles, wearing sparkly bangles. Um, when these hang down, when you've got your arms hanging down by the side of you, again, that is bringing a bit of bling, a bit of sparkle to your hip area. And when you walk, it's giving you a little bit of a swish and a bit of dynamic movement in your stride. Bangles, things around your wrists, look really lovely and do um, bring a bit more attention to the lower part of your body. I think also when we're looking at necklaces, try and steer clear of necklaces that are like chokers so again all the focus and emphasis is around here try instead to look for necklaces and chains that come down slightly again if you're wearing a v-neck top items of jewelry and necklaces that go down into that v-neck can look incredibly lovely and also they just highlight the the downward movement going down this way so something with perhaps um I don't know, an emblem or, um, I don't know, stones or something like that that just goes downwards, a long necklace. That works a treat. Number two. For number two, I have gone with shoes. Now, you wear different types of shoes at different times of the year, depending on the season and the weather and the temperature and everything like that. We wear a certain type of shoes to work. We wear certain types of shoes when we do sports. Again, with it, like with accessories and jewellery, it's quite personal. But the kind of guide I try to go with is, um, I'm, I'm quite lucky I haven't got very big feet, but I think that if you have got larger feet, you don't wanna be drawing attention to the fact that you've got big feet. You want to instead make them look a little bit smaller. So shoes and heels that perhaps have darker colours, making things look a little bit smaller rather than heavily embellished, heavily patterned, uh, shoes and sandals that draw attention to them perhaps. Um, heels, girls like to wear heels, I love to wear heels, I'm not going to wear them every day. I think it's just about being um, appropriate with things like heels as well. Um, I would not wear heels to go to Sainsbury's, um, I wouldn't wear heels. If I was just going to the corner shop or something like that, I would just wear a normal pair of pumps or trainers. That's good enough for me. I think it's just making sure that you're wearing the appropriate footwear for the activity that you're doing. If you're going out um, for an evening out, going out with friends, fine. If you are not particularly tall, lucky you, because you can wear something with a heel on that is so flattering to women. Wearing heels is flattering to women. It elongates the leg. It creates a beautiful shape. It makes the bottom look all pert. Heels do wonders. Um, but if you are tall, that doesn't mean you can't wear them. It just means that you wear them at the appropriate times. Number one. 
for number one, I think the most important thing is that you own it, that you own what you wear, have a belief in yourself, have some confidence, hold your head up, make eye contact with people. I remember when I first started transitioning and I started living full time and I was just getting to the hang of um, clothes shopping and um, dressing and things like that. Um, my, I was out with my mum one day and she said to me, stop looking at the floor, stop looking at the ground, lift your head up and look straight ahead, look people in the eyes and smile, own it, have confidence and believe in yourself regardless of what you're wearing. It always brings more attention if you're looking down, believe it or not, because it's as if you've got, I don't know, something to hide. Be you, be beautiful and own it. So I'm gonna leave it there for today. Um, I hope this video has been really helpful to you. I'm not trying to preach, I'm just trying to give you some hints that maybe you can work into your everyday clothes just to help out. Things that I found that have helped me. Um, if you've liked this video and you wanna see more of what I'm doing, then please, like I said at the beginning, please like this video send me a comment, any hints or tips that you would like to share with myself and with other people watching this channel, please don't be afraid to put a comment below. And also a subscribe would be amazing. I'm trying to build this channel. I, I just want there to be um, a little bit more information there for trans women perhaps who are that little bit older, sort of in their 30s and 40s and upward. There's a lot of uh, trans YouTubers who are quite a bit younger, but I don't often find many that are that bit older. And so I think, shout it from the rooftops, tell your friends about it. Um, I'm really keen to give you more information and do more videos. Also, drop me a message, put a comment down below if there's anything or any questions that you've got to ask me. But until then, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you.